Over the past couple of weeks, Fallout 4 has been receiving a plethora of incredible new mod releases. I would actually say that November in particular may have just been the single best month for Fallout 4 mods. It's definitely in the top three for the year at the very least. And to cap off this month right at the very end of it, we get several additional mod releases that are pretty incredible. Some truly next level things that you guys are going to want to download and enjoy with your game. In this video, I'm going to be sharing details on many of these. I'll have links in the description down below so you can check them out for yourself but kicking things off let's first take a look at what is likely to become a mainstay on many people's load order that with the Russian assault pack so over the past few weeks months I've been teasing this one to you in my upcoming mod series if you want to see more of that you can subscribe but in effect what this is going to do is add five new weapons into Fallout 4 all of them having a Russian theme and being one of the few weapon packs we have for this game and also as a little bit of a bonus to go along with it there actually is a totally new outfit or armor that also comes with the pack the weapons this will add in are a stetchkin APS which is a mini machine pistol you can configure this to be full auto or not you also do have the mp412 rex which is a new break action revolver then the pp19 bizon which is going to be an smg in this game it has that very unique look and magazine style so it's something you might remember from other games call of duty in particular although after that you also do have the sega 12 the very iconic shotgun that you definitely have seen in one movie or video game or something. And then last but not least, what is probably the most iconic out of all of them, the SVD Dragunov, a new sniper rifle for Fallout 4. And then finally, the little cherry on top is without a doubt the new outfit this also adds in, that with the special forces fatigues. So this mod right off the bat, just the fact that it adds in all of these various weapons makes it pretty incredible. It's not like these are haphazardly added in, all of them feature custom and animations and some of them are pretty unique as some of the reload styles for some of these weapons are quite unique also and of course to go along with that things like custom sounds also you can see all these various animations in the background and although some of them definitely are fairly typical there's only so many ways you can do a pistol animation some also have a little bit more uniqueness to them so the animations and the fact that they all feature custom animations is great or this mod really shines where it really goes to the next level is that every single single one of these weapons has a plethora of customization options. When a new weapon pack does release for Fallout 4, the vast majority of the time I kind of expect it'll get skimped on in the customization department. Just the fact that they're putting work into five separate things makes it kind of expected that they can't give each of those things as much depth as a singular weapon mod, but that is not the case with this one. Every single one of these weapons has a wide variety of customization options to choose from, whether it be stocks, damage types, caliber types, which color they're going to be, which kind of scopes they'll have. On many of these, you could also change the front end of this weapon or on the pistol, actually have very exaggerated and large stocks. There is a lot here. There's actually too much for me to even talk about. I could make a 15 minute video just looking in depth at every single one of these. And although I cover many weapon mods on this channel, I feel like with this weapon pack in particular, it really is five standalone weapons or standalone weapon quality all bundled together for an awesome experience. And even to further drive that point home, this also extends to the armor that comes with it. It has a wide variety of modifications outside of just the vanilla options, but also also many different material swaps. And then of course, lastly, all of this is implemented in a very nice way, automatically integrated into the level list of the game. So you'll start seeing them on other enemies, but also on things like vendors. Taking it all together, this is probably the best weapon mod you could download over the past six months or maybe even longer. That not because each of these individually are the best ever, but rather when you download this pack, when you get these five new weapons, they'll pretty much be something for everyone. Whether you want a cool new shotgun, and even within just the shotgun, do you want it to be almost a rifle using slug rounds? Do you want it to be a full auto beast that explodes on impact or something just typical that is semi-auto with nice wood furnishing. All of those options are there and that's just going over one of the weapon mods in this pack. So overall, this is an amazing new mod for Fallout 4. This feels like a true DLC for the game, something I would gladly have paid money for. It's out right now though for free on both PC and Xbox One, and if you haven't already, I highly recommend you download it. But now that you have a variety of new weapons in your game, you're probably going to want something to actually use 
use them on. And for that, we have another great mod, that with more feral ghouls, a zombie mod. So obviously we just came to the end of November. The zombie and spooky scary mod season is long past, but this is just a cool and fun one to add to your game overall. What it's going to do is actually add in a ton of additional varieties or unique takes on feral ghouls in Fallout 4. These are naturally implemented into the level list, so anytime feral ghouls would have spawned, you might get one of these new variants. And these can be terrifying. It definitely has that sense of a morbid reality in Fallout 4, something that definitely feels realistic in the world of Fallout 4's Commonwealth and the post-apocalypse overall, and it just makes interacting with feral ghouls in general a lot more interesting. One of the best parts of this mod though is that it actually has a functionality patch for zombie walkers, that being what is arguably the best zombie mod outside of this one. And then the two together definitely create the best zombie experience in Fallout 4, giving you hordes of zombies that will randomly spawn or that could potentially attack your settlements or even you in your sleep. Zombie walkers will add in the spawning of them and even other NPCs resurrecting as zombies after they die, while more feral ghouls will give them a lot more diversity and make them a far more interesting foe. Alright, so now you do have the zombie apocalypse in Fallout 4 and some new weapons to fend that off. So what next? Then a new power armor to hide out in. And this is actually a power armor I've covered on the channel in the past, that of course with the excavator power armor. This being one of the power armors that originally appeared in Fallout 76. In Fallout 76, this actually had a nice $18 skin you could buy on the Atomic Shop. Or if you download the new update for this mod, you could actually just get that skin for free. And that is going to be the Raider variant of the excavator power armor, which is definitely my favorite. It fits really well into Fallout 4 to begin with and naturally just looks Looks good. You can definitely picture raiders actually doing this to power armor. That's definitely the main appeal of some of the recent updates, but since release, this has gotten several. The raider power armor looks great, but you could also find things like alternate or other higher quality skins for this mod. So if you want it to have a traditional but slightly different or a little bit of a more grimy or dirty look, but separately, and I really like this, there are also just other more unique skins. Taking heavy inspiration from Fallout 76 and bringing some of those looks into into Fallout 4. These look pretty great, definitely just as good as it looked in Fallout 76. The main difference is this is free updates for a free mod, while in Fallout 76, collectively all of these skins would probably be like $40 to $50, which is absolutely insane. There are several options to choose from, I'm just showing you a couple of them in the background. I'm pretty excited to see where they go next. There's several other pretty cool changes or skins for this in 76, and I like how they're adding several of these now to Fallout 4. Although I know, I know, I get it, not everybody loves power armor. So separately, another fairly simple one, we have the Gunner Marksman outfit. This is actually a pretty cool outfit mod for Fallout 4. Being kind of a military theme, but being heavily inspired by the look and feel of the Gunners, to me, it almost looks like a sniper outfit in Fallout 4. I think it just gives off those vibes. On the back of this one, you could actually see a big Gunner logo, while well, that is optional. You cannot have that if you don't want to. There's not a ton in the way of customization. There's just two variants, one with a vibe or you could choose one without, but I thought it was a cool new outfit mod, and again, it fits into the overall theme of Fallout 4. But then we actually have a pretty large mod, that with the Remnants Bunker. I don't typically cover mods like this on the channel, and honestly, there's not a ton of great ones in this category, but what the Remnants Bunker is going to be is a totally new and very different player home for Fallout 4. It's technically described as a player home, but really it's a totally new interior location slash workshop. So now near Starlight Drive-In, you're going to find this new Enclave themed bunker featuring basically a fully fledged Enclave base. You could find little hologram soldiers wandering about, but also several different rooms, a barracks, an armory, a med bay. And this interior location is pretty massive. It has pretty much all the things you would want, storage options for you and a bed for the player, but also a lot of other space you could build out into. If you're into just typical settlement building, you do have that option, or alternatively, something like Sim Settlements, I think would go great with this. But as cool as this base is, it really only is one half of this mod, as this also adds in a wide variety of new workshop items also into Fallout 4. These will all be added in a new category in the workshop mode, and it gives you the opportunity to place down a wide variety of other things at other settlements. So overall, not my typical cup of as far as mods go, but I think this coupled with some settlements could create a very cool and very interesting base in this game. 
and it's definitely something I'm sure many of you will try out. But then last but not least, one that's actually a pretty handy quality of life mod for Fallout 4, we have holotape display shelves. This is very simple, it's going to add in a variety of different colored display shelves that you can place holotapes into, and those holotapes will be visually represented on the shelf. There's two variants, a typical one for typical holotapes that is fairly large, but then separately a smaller one that is just assignable for all the game holotapes you could find in Fallout 4. So this mod has that two-pronged approach. On one hand, I think it just looks cool. It's a cool thing to throw on the wall in your settlement or in your base, but separate from that, it also has a pretty large practical benefit. You pick up a lot of holotapes, whether it be from mods, adding in custom content, or just from doing various quests. That category of your inventory tends to get pretty filled, so this gives you a nice little place to store things you might need later. You could have separate shelves for mod content or quest content, and when you couple that with the fact that it just looks kind of cool, it definitely is a good addition to just about everyone's game. But other Otherwise, with all of that being said, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you found this one informative. We definitely got a lot of great recent mod releases, a lot of good content got added to this game as of late. And although November was probably one of the best months so far this year, I'm very excited to see what we have in December, as it does look like several new top tier mods are likely to be on the way. But either way, as always again, I thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one, I hope you found it informative, but with that, I hope to see you all next time. Next time. Later.